Good afternoon. This is your devotion from First Presbyterian Church for Thursday, April 8th. This Sunday, the second Sunday of Easter, we'll be talking about the Jesus appearance on the night of Easter Day to his apostles, his disciples, soon to be apostles. And then a week later, he returns to get in contact with Thomas, who he didn't talk to the first time. In fact, the apostles are, are behind locked doors, afraid of the Jewish authorities. So when Jesus shows up, the most important thing he says to them is peace. The peace of Christ can't be isolated, can't be contained behind locked do doors. So this promise of peace must be made to Thomas also, even though he wasn't present the first time. Jesus comes back. This is a week after Resurrection Day. I'll be reading to you from the Gospel according to John at the 20th chapter and the 24th verse. This is the word of God. Now Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands, and put my finger where the nails were, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe it. So a week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. May God bless the reading and the hearing of this portion of his holy word. In Streams in the Desert, Libby Kalman writes, how important it is for God to keep us focused on things that are unseen, for we are so easily snared by the things we can see. If Peter was ever going to walk on the water, he had to walk. But if he was going to swim to Jesus, he had to swim. He couldn't do both. If a bird is going to fly, it must stay away from fences and trees, trusting the buoyancy of its wings, and if it tries to stay within easy reach of the ground, it will never fly very well. God had to bring Abraham to the end of his own strength and let him see that with his own body he could do nothing. He had to consider his own body, Hebrews 11:12 tells us, as good as dead and then trust God to do all the work. When he looked away from himself and trusted only God, he became fully persuaded that God had power to do what he had promised. That's Romans 4, 21. This is what God is teaching us. And he has to keep results that are encouraging away from us until we learn to trust him without them. Then he loves to make his word as real to us in actuality as it is in our faith. I remember a story about Billy Graham. He was beginning his ministry and he realized that he couldn't begin a ministry if he had questions and doubts about his faith. For him, reading the Bible was sometimes difficult 
because it was difficult for him to take everything the Bible said on faith. At one point he said he was out walking through the hills and he simply fell to his knees. He said, God, I want to believe. I do believe. I believe every word of your holy word is true. Now, where I lack perfect understanding, I ask you to give me greater understanding and faith and patience until the day you can until the day you can explain to me how I can understand what you're saying. There's a poem that Kalman concludes with. It says, I do not ask what God must prove. His word is true to me. And I and that before I can believe, he first must let me see. It is enough for me to know it's true because he says it so. On his unchanging word I'll stand and trust till I can understand. That's your devotion for today, and I, I hope that this finds you well and happy. Trust in God and wash your hands.